you gonna do when I like catch an attitude drop to the knees and show gratitude kiss my ring chick this song right here is for all the fellas out there taking care of business and making that money to provide for their lady provide for their family and to all the ladies out there the fellas gonna need a little bit more than a big piece of chicken if you got a good man and you want for nothing and you want to keep that man you need to learn how to check that attitude you need to show some appreciation you need to show some respect girl bounce to me bounce to me kneel for me kneel for me Kiss the ring, kiss the ring. Bow to me, bow to me, kneel for me, kneel for me. Shout out to Big Shirley. Devotion and honesty, I show that. Hey Shirley, did you get enough gravy? Bow down, girl, you need to show some Shirley. Obedience and loyalty. Oh, Shirley. Friendship and trust. Did you get enough cornbread? I deserve that. Bow down, pay homage to the king in your life. Baby girl, what's the deal? What's the deal? Got no time for freaking girl, you're acting mad. You're acking mad. Never want for nothing because I'm paying the bill. I'm paying the bill. How you getting, girl? The house is filthy. No, no meals. meals. Come on, girl. Give me some feedback. Give me feedback. Let me know what's good. What's up? Where's your head at? Up, giving me you? attitude. Not today, girl. Dead that. Strip off some clothes. I'm trying to beat that. Bed that. You're really saying not tonight. Not tonight. My blood is boiling hot, girl. You're getting me tight. Oh, man. What's going on? What's going on? Hey! In this We're back. Moment, Shout out to the scene. Say what's wrong uh, right. Hey! It's not One love you me. to the F. Cause I'm addicted to D. the good life. Uh, Get it. Let's do it. No need to say. Get with it. No. Step to it. Now, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Life before. Life after. Never be the same. So I know y'all had a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> I've been getting messages all day. Ooh, Thanksgiving dinner conversation was interesting. 
Big Mama was mad. Big Shirley was full. Baby Mama was gone. Oh! Don't get mad at me. Hey, Mama, what, what was that thing? You know what you did that's when it was going up? Execute Order 66. Nothing can stop me now. Cause I'm addicted to what you and I, I hate him. Who he think he is? Them mama black. Oh, I can't stand him. No, 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 no. What if? Who knew? We are back. Let's go to deep space for the lighting today. Welcome back, everybody. Shout out to the CIA, the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies, the FBI. That's right. We got a special, a special Thanksgiving show for everybody who is at subscriber level. You get to actually, you get to be a part of this conversation because I don't know if you watch the Marvel, the Marvel uh, channel or the Marvel TV show, what if, if you don't, you're missing good TV. Um, but a little housekeeping. Let's get the likes up. Keep them up. Keep it going. One of the things, who is this right here? Oh, that's the watcher. That right there is the watcher. And what he does is he watches over the universe. He can't interfere. But there was a series called What If? And the watcher had to ask the question, what if things hadn't played out the way they had played out in oh specific parts of Marvel movies, Captain America, Black Panther, all these other things. But bottom line is, I get this question asked often. All right, Godfather, got it. You are 50 plus years old. But what would you do to, what would you do if you were a younger man today, how would you live? How would you move? What would you do? Well, and that's what we're going to explore today. Now, here's what I'm going to require for everybody. I need you to keep the engagement up. Moderators, we're going to have more people in the chat room than normal. As long as they're being cool, that's cool. But if I see anybody acting silly, uh, we're going to get that up out of here. Hold on. Bye -bye, bye -bye, bye -bye. So, candle of the evening, uh, it's my one from One Hotel, Brooklyn, and then fragrance. Today I decided to go for a twofer. One is called Ood for Greatness for Thanksgiving. All right, so here it is. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Bam! And you say, God damn, this is a dope jam. Is everything good? Let's see what's going on in the chat room. Appreciate it, because... Let's bring up the lights a little bit more because I will tell you this. It's hard out there for a young man. Um, so in the, in the description, it says, if I was between the ages of 21 and 35, how differently would I live in these modern times? So uh, some background information, when I use the term Henry, Henry is a term that means high earner, not rich yet. Uh, for the sake of this conversation, we're talking, you're talking about anywhere from about $75,000 to uh, $90,000 a year. 
Uh, in the grand scheme of things, Henry's really um, over two hundred thousand dollars, but that's not really what we need. We're talking about if you're making at least three, if you're making three times your age. So let's say you're a guy who's thirty years old and you're making ninety thousand dollars and living in Atlanta. You are in the Henry status, brother. And let's say you're let's say you're not officially a Henry yet, but you're a Henry in training. Let's say you're in college, you just got out of college. You have your degree in computer science or something, I don't know. You're, you're a truck driver. Bottom line, you're on the way. You're what I call a hit squad, Henry in training. So between 25, 21 and 35 is what I want to focus on right now. All right. So um, if you want to get, if you want me to answer a question, throw it in the super chat because it's kind of, things are moving a little bit quick over here. And I want to get into it, and I'm also depending upon Henry. depending upon how uh, how you guys are uh, contributing and stuff. It will determine whether or not I open the panel. I want to say this though: I have been getting more emails and messages talking about how different Thanksgiving is this year versus every previous year. I think this is one of the first years a lot of guys were looking forward to going home for Thanksgiving and sitting down at the table. I mean, I'm, guys are like, came and said, they brought like talking points. Like, so, auntie, have you heard of this guy named Kevin Samuels? Oh my God, people are losing their minds. And that is, a, and here's the thing, good for you guys, have the conversation. All right. All right, let's get into it. First of all, a quick overview. I talked about it the other night when the audio was going in and out. I need you guys to focus. I'm going to uh, actually make a video about this, but there are roughly three masculine archetypes. There's the refined, there's the rakish, and then there's the rugged. Okay. And I don't want to belabor that too much, but most men, the majority of men fall into one of these archetypes. I fall into the refined archetype. Um, and let me read some of this stuff off too, because, since we want to get into it. Refined, refined masculine, de -de 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 -de. masculine archetype. Understand where you... Understanding where you where you fall is is important as well. Uh, refine. Here we go. All right. So just a general overview. Um. A refined man is a man who is financially and influentially masculine. He bends the world to his will by the means of his connections, his money, his social and political power. He's capable of mixing both direct and subtle elements to accomplish his ends. That's what the category that most fits with me. All right. And no one is greater or better than the other. They all have their, 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 um, their uses. The next one is going to be called rugged. Rugged is a man who is physically masculine. He bends nature to his will by means of brute force and like a caveman attitude. They're kind of borderline with that no-nonsense kind of thing. There's nothing subtle about a rugged man, and everything in life exists for a specific direct purpose. He's an adventurer, a mountain man, a gladiator, a blue-collar worker. The majority of men fall into this category. And it's going to be important that you understand your masculine archetype because your image, how you carry yourself into the world, needs to line up with who you are. <clears throat> and then the rake. The rake is a man who is socially masculine. He influences individual people by his will, his attitude, his charisma, and his disdain for the rules of society and, he's be and, and being beholden to another man. He is capable of using direct elements to accomplish his goals, but he lives largely in a subtle world, 
always thinking two to three steps ahead of people around him. Um, and, and this is like, if you think of Johnny Depp's characters that he tends to play in Hollywood, he tends to play a rakish kind of character. Um, I know uh, I don't want to use these archetypes uh, because especially in these spaces, they get kind of overused in my opinion, but this is quintessential Sigma male kind of stuff. All of these men have something to do. Refine, rake, rogue. Refine, rake, rugged. Which one are you? No, and that's one of the things I would, if I were young, a young man, I would start, because you're at the bottom of your earning potential, at the bottom of your purpose. So your image is going to be critical. It is how people are going to identify you now and in the future. So, one of the most effective things a young man can do is honestly figuring out his archetype, understanding his style, personality, and living in and and working in those and living, dressing, moving, and working in those environments. Because you have to ask yourself, how does a refined man live? How does he speak? What does he live? What does he eat? What does he drive? Who does he date? All these things, and it's not necessarily a matter of your profession. It's a matter of your archetype. There's a masculine archetype and a style personality. So like with me, I'm a refined masculine archetype with a European style personality. Think James Bond. Think James Bond. Think James Bond or think the guys from Suits. Well, actually the guys from Suits lean a little bit more corporate. Harvey Specter on Suits, he leans a little bit more corporate powerhouse. Think of, a, think of your typical CEO or your typical politician and that tends to be much more of a uh, ghost on power. Idris Elba, a lot of the characters he plays, that tends to be an uh, all-Americans kind of style personality. Now, European, American, and corporate powerhouse may look alike, may, may look very similar, but they're different in so many different ways. But me, refined European. European, and in particular, what style of European? There's French, Italian, and English. I actually will be refined European English because I tend to like a well-constructed uh, suit with proper lines and everything like that. Why is this important? Because as a young man, many young men today mess up with their image because you're still dressing like you dressed when you were in junior high and high school. And you don't have to do that. There's ways to, to dress yourself well on a budget. But one of the biggest mistakes a lot of young men make is dressing too young to be taken seriously and, and, and then hanging on too long and not moving it to the next level. Um, why is this important? Because one of the biggest mistakes, uh, one of the things I would do right now if I was a young man, one, I'm talking about between the ages of 21 and 35. I would definitely live in a major city. It, for me in particular, London, New York would be right up my alley. Uh, I like densely populated urban areas. I do not like sprawling, expansive cities like Houston or like LA where you got to drive everywhere. I love public transportation and I love density because Lots of, re lots of different reasons. But you need to find a city that actually works with you. Now, I know a lot of young guys are going to be like, well, damn, how can I live in these places? These costs of living are so high. That's the next thing I would do. you got to have roommates, gentlemen. Bump this thing about living by yourself. Let's say you live in Dallas, though, or Atlanta. This one, you need to get a duplex. You and your roommate splitting a duplex. So you have your own house with your own, have your own privacy. And in today of Airbnb uh, rentals, one of the things that you young people have, younger folks today have, is people aren't telling you to do what they told my generation to do. They told us to rush out and buy homes in our 20s. And I'm glad that I didn't do that because so many people got stuck. See, as a young man, you need to be flexible. You need to be able to move to where the opportunity is because the world is changing. If, you, if you're living in New York City, and New York City's hot, right? Let's say, let's say, well, 
when 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 the dot com explosion happened uh that what is the thing the show on hbo silicon valley you need to be able to be there or the silicon valley of the south austin to take advantage of all of that investment capital all these other things all the connections the energy and everything else you really aren't going to be able to take advantage of stuff like silicon valley living in denver you need to be living in it case in point oklahoma i moved to here to atlanta Atlanta opens up all kind of things by being ge geographical. So I would worry, once you get your image together, understand what that is, then your, where you live, your geography. Geography determines a lot. Geography determines a lot. <clears throat> now, once you're there, you're working. And you know what I think, gentlemen, you got a, you got a full-time job and a part-time job. Your full-time job is how you're living, paying your bills, saving and investing for the future. Your part-time job is how you're investing in your most valuable in your most valuable asset, you. This is where you're investing in your in your high, in your skills to get you compensated. This is where you actually pay for coaching, personal development, self-improvement. Um, your your full-time job pays for your core skill sets. Your part-time job pays for your soft skill sets or your EQ. And it's the EQ, the network, that is what's going to help you expand exponentially. Because if I were a young man today, there is no way in hell I would be living in this world alone. You need to find your wolf pack. And that's three to five men that live in the same place that you do, work in similar industries, that when one gets promoted, he opens the door for another. I'm telling you guys what I did in my, because so many young men fail because you're trying to do everything by yourself. You need to be a part of a group, a network. If you're an attorney, <clears throat> you need to be hanging out with an accountant, a physician, a dentist, um, um, somebody, in, uh, a couple of entrepreneurs and, and, and somebody who's good in finance, real estate, you need to make, think of these as little, think of, think of being a Henry or a hit squad as being a big fraternity. And then when you're on your own campus, you need your little chapter. Your chapter is your guys. Your guys are the guys that, uh, have the ability to level set you and check you. Because the biggest thing that can throw you off at today is getting out of here messing with women. Because today in a heavily connected world, plenty of fish, bumble, tinder, da 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 da, da hook up economy, swipe left, swipe right, whatever. That is the thing that throws us men off more than anything else. Getting involved with women. So between eight, between 21 and 30. I would not be spending any more than about 7% of my time dealing with women. 7%. So let's say that's enough to go on a date a week. You can spend, you know, four to six hours a week with a woman, but nothing super serious. And my motto would be double bag it. You better use two condoms. <laughs> Because the one thing that could screw you up out here is making a child outside of wedlock. One, you're not ready for it. Two, the things you need to be doing, the things I'll be doing right now as a younger man, I would be in a city with my wolf pack, you know, making money, investing, taking risks, doing things, failing, starting over. So you need to be, you, that's what I'll be focusing on. So minimalism has its place, gentlemen, but I would not be playing defensive. And I hear a lot of young guys talking about being defensive. No, at, at your youth is when you go on the attack. This is when you risk. And how do you make sure you can take care of that? This is when, if I were between 20, 20, 21 and 35, Young Henry's, what do I, I've already told you where I live, the geography. 
I get my wolf pack. You need to be in a, you need to be in a high profile gym and you need to be working out four to five days a week because you need to build up a, to be an athlete for life, working on your strength training, your diet and your flexibility for when you get older. Also, this is when you need to be taking up some sort of martial art. You need to be proficient. You need to know how to handle yourself. I know so many, I know so many young men who, if you were out with a beautiful woman and somebody who crossed the line with it, you just have to wait for security to come. You need to be proficient with your hands and your feet. You need to be able to knock a mother sucker out. God forbid it ever happens, but you need to be able to hold them. All this stuff you guys want to have, you want to have nice stuff, how are you going to be able to defend it? Everywhere I go, I carry this. Amongst other things. You know, you know what you can do with this? You know what you can do with this? You, <laughs> if, you, if you actually have any form of actual combat training, you know what this is. What you can do with it. Pow! You can actually break a windshield if you need to. Non-lethal. Or can be lethal. What you can do with this, and it's, it, hides in the, it hides in the palm of your hand. Gentlemen, you're going to be living in a world where you're going to be separating yourself from the crowd. You're going to be living in a bigger city. You need, you need non-lethal. You need a blade. And you need a pew, pew, pew. And a shoddy. <laughs> yes, a shoddy for home defense. A P365 for concealed carry. A nice uh, three inch or less blade. I prefer a harpy. I carry a harpy. EDC, everyday carry. So I love it when people talk, laugh about, yeah, you got that bag or whatever. Yeah, you don't want to see me going in that motherfucker. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. One of the biggest ways young men end up messing up today is because you don't know how to fight. You don't know how to fight. I mean, an actual fighting system. So when your manhood gets challenged or whatever, you got to talk shit. You got to talk loud and hope nobody calls you a bluff. And in a world where everybody got this, everything that you're trying to build together, you get, end up getting into a, an altercation or a situation you don't want to. You don't want to be seen uh, uh, catching the L. <laughs> but see, the way you don't catch an L is the way you carry yourself. Men who actually are really trained and uh, to take care of themselves tend not to get into confrontations because it's the last. It's the last resort. You don't carry yourself that way. You don't talk loud. You don't get aggressive. See, a lot of guys talk a lot of shit. And talk and, and sound like they're real tough, but they can't. They got no got no skills. I can tell you, most people. You if you're trained, you don't even have to fight them. All you gotta do is move around. They don't even have the wind. They can't even do one three minute round. All you gotta do is move around for two minutes. Let them let them swing. They'll tie themselves out because they all mad. And the adrenaline's going. They're breathing all heavy. They're breathing up here. And, <gasps> You just mm, 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 mm. And you hit it with a nice two piece in the knee and bye bye, keep on moving. Serious gentlemen, get in that gym. Get in that gym. Learn a martial arts system. Get certified uh, that you can actually shoot a and hit a target uh, with your with your handheld. But then you need something for home defense. You cannot, it would be unwise to use a handheld at home. That thing can go through windows, I mean, go through walls. That's what a shotgun is for. Aim to the room, pull the trigger, 
Buckshot, buckshot, birdshot, buckshot. Remember that from Dave Chappelle? Buckshot. Or birdshot, birdshot, or rock salt. Bird, uh, bird, rock salt. Boom. Rock salt takes care of a lot of stuff. What is it? Two, two, one. One, one. Buckshot, buckshot, buckshot. Birdshot, birdshot, bang. Birdshot, bang. Birdshot, bang, bang, bang. Yeah. So, chat room is fast. Yeah, there's a lot of people in here. So, young men, why is this important? Get the likes up before I lock the chat room down. See, we should have over 4,000 likes. See, I got, the, I got the chat room to set to where people can interact, and y'all ain't even hitting the like button. All right, I'm going to go to members only. See, why is this stuff important? What's the most important thing of all this, guys, is your wolf pack, your guys. So you should have a coach. You should have a coach you're working with for specific outcomes, personal or professional development. Mentors, most of you guys aren't going to get mentors. 98% of guys will not get a mentor. Mentors are organic, uh, informal, and there's not a specific outcome. A mentor is kind of like a wise old uncle, but you're going to have to pay for the uh, cheat codes. And that's what you pay a coach for. Now, how, what would I be doing if I were, this is, and how you handle your social life is important because a lot of times guys are worried about making money, but how do most, how do most men end up losing money being socially uh, socially, not being socially adept. I understand that making money is important, but when you go out into the world, the world is about people. You need to learn uh, how to look out for uh, men who are predatory. And I, I, the last thing I would be worrying about is uh, a woman trying to get my stuff because you are aware. I'm not going to say you are matrix aware. You know what it is. And you can live with matrix awareness. Uh, I just call it, I don't even call it the, 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 the different designations. Men are like dogs. Women are like cats. All women. You need to understand anytime you deal with any woman, any woman, she's going to go left. There are no perfect females. They're all going to go left at some point. You need to ask yourself, how much am I willing to risk? Every time you deal with a woman, get pragmatic, ruthless, and savage and say, how much am I willing to risk and what do I want as an outcome? Assign it a dollar value and think about going to Vegas. There's sometimes that people go to Vegas just to gamble and say, I'm going, I got $1,000 to blow in the casino. They don't get mad that they didn't come home winning because it was the experience. That's how you need to approach women. Don't get mad. You got the experience. But see, far too often, you guys go into, uh, you end up dealing with women and you want to turn a thousand into a million. No. Women are around for the experience. Especially between, eight, between 21 and 30, 21 and 35. You shouldn't be worried about legacy or anything like that until at least 35. When would I start thinking about relation, long-term relationships and marriage? after 35 for the 20% of you guys out there who are going to be in the time for the 20% of you guys that are going to be in the uh, high earners. It's that group of men. I would consider worrying about long-term relationships because if you've stayed on task for the lap from 21 to 30, 35, you have at least 10 plus years, 14 years uh, of, of being out in the field. You should have got everything out of your system. And this is the point to where you start realizing that, look, man, uh, having dating three and four people, a different girlfriend every couple, three or four months, that gets old. That gets old. I'm talking to the guys who are going to be in the top 20% now. Now, here's the thing. As a man, you got to decide where you're going to be. This channel is for all men, but I dedicate the content for the guys who want to be in the top 20% because that's the guys who have the most leverage. 
if you are if you're choosing to say hey man i want to live a minimalist life i want to just go work in anchorage alaska make a shit ton of money stack it and live a live as a bachelor cool you're welcome too but this is about networking people let me give you guys some examples of who um if we had mascots who they would be for the overall mentality the mindset would be tywin lannister lions don't concern themselves with the opinion of the sheep that he would be the overall og uh mindset of all this or oh, tywin lannister or old school sean connery james bond but because most of you guys don't know that guy, Tywin Lannister. Pre-Tyrion getting before Tyrion murked him on the on the on the commode. Now, you guys are all familiar with Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio fits right into that refined masculine archetype European style personality. Yup. Leonardo DiCaprio. Hey, some of you guys want to live like Leonardo. Cool. Leonardo DiCaprio, Jamie Foxx have a lot in common. Massively talented. And Jamie Foxx has come out and said he don't want to get married. If you're a man who knows you don't really, well, Jamie Foxx is different because he has a daughter. Leonardo, as far as I know, has no children. If you don't want legacy, Leonardo. Leonardo's a good, Leonardo's a good, uh, Kind of a, I don't want, men I look to for inspiration. Leonardo DiCaprio, Tywin Lannister, Jamie Foxx, uh, Michael B. Jordan. That's why I have him up there. Michael B. Michael B. I remember him back when he was on the wire before he got snuffed by Poot, Poot, and uh, B- Bodie. Now he's the man. This is before he decided to date, uh, what's the name? But keep it moving. I ain't worried about all that. The man has leverage. He has options. And if the world was the way it should be, he should be able to live and make his choices just like Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion and all. They can choose what they want to. So he should be able to do what he wants to. Um, Shout out to, think about uh, the, the rapper Drake when he has parties and he invites all these women over. He invites the women over for the guys, but he ignores them. If the stories are true, and that's a that's a boss move. Because you're worried about the next steps. You're not getting hung up in all the women who want to be next to you. And um and and somebody else who's whose whose attitude I kind of like, even though I don't necessarily dig his choices of women, Elon Musk, because he's a futurist. If I could rewrite, if I could really rewrite things the way they were. I would rewrite Tony Stark and Doctor Strange the way they should be written. Tony never would have married Pepper. Tony would have lived just like Tony Stark. <laughs> oh, he still would live just like Tony Stark. And Doctor Strange, I kind of resonate more with Doctor Strange. Um, yeah. Guys, it, you got to decide where you're going to be. Where you're going to be? Are you going to be in the bottom 80% or the top 20%? And between the ages of 21 and 35 is how you cement that. If you're working 60, 60 hours a week minimum that you're getting paid for, living off of the 40 hours a week over here, taking the 20 hours and after taxes, investing, you know, invested in a crypto, in, in a, you can make riskier investments over here with this, but you want to take at least 30% of this money from your part-time job and invest it in personal development, self-improvement, one-on-one coaching. And then that other 20%, uh, if you take 50% and invest it in on top of your regular investments, that you take this money and invest it in, and I don't know, real estate, crypto, figure whatever out. I'm not going to tell you where because I'm not going to get into that. I'll leave it for financial people to, to, to go on to this part. I'm not trying to be everything. But then that 20%, because after you take 50% to invest, 30% of personal development, self-improvement, this 20% over here is your tricking fund. 
This is the money you, you use to, to spend on women, dating, etc. Where does your clothing budget come from? Your clothing budget comes from your primary stuff. So women should never cost you because you should never be taking what you're doing with any woman from your primary source, from your primary, from your primary stuff. As a young man, you need what? Six hours of sleep max. I see young men who, who work less than I do. You need to have a place to lay your head, shower, shave, shit, sleep, sex. And this is why I'm much more of a fan of the, of the duplex kind of thing. But duplexes are not available everywhere. You may not be able to get a duplex in New York City. But it, it's not uncommon. But that living alone stuff, living alone is dumb. It's the ma it is a way to cost you more money. All right. Uh, I'm going to open this up for, to see who wants to get on and ask some questions. Did I miss anything? What's game over? Game over is you get out here and get somebody pregnant. You get over here, get somebody out, get out here and get somebody pregnant. Game over. You're out. You're out. Unless you're already in the top 10% of earners, you're out of here. You're out. Again, babies. Anything else can really kind of be overcome. I would be developing my social network. I would, I would double, triple, quadruple down on my network. Where I see a lot of young men going afoul is they are solitary. They're solo. I see a lot of young guys who are on, they're purpose driven, but they have no network. Your network is what, what is where opportunities come from. See, you know how much business gets done in country clubs and in cigar and cigar lounges and things like that. You need a network working for you, regardless as to what you want to do in your personal life. If you're going to be a solitary rogue agent, Jason Bourne is a goddamn movie. You need a network. Why is that so important? That's part of the whole high value equation, because a as a 21 to 35, if you're working like that. 60 hours minimum, you're in the gym, you got a coach, a personal trainer, da, da, da. you need a social life. You need to be, you need to become known in your city. You need to become New York City's, Atlanta's, Miami's, LA's, Seattle, uh, Boston, Dallas, Houston, Austin, uh, Scottsdale, San Diego, most Ella, Charlotte. These are all cities I would consider living in. You need to be considered one of the city's most eligible bachelors. And to that end, you need to be seen around town. You need to be known at the Chamber of Commerce. You need to be known at the American Heart Association. Everything. And especially if you plan on being a business owner and having employees, the mayor needs to know your name. Your local congressperson needs to your name, the counselors, you, anyway, this is where y'all lose. This is where you lose because you, you guys get so worried about the things you can control and you don't want to get out there and build a network and the network is what pays dividends over a lifetime. All right, here's what we're going to do. If, let me see if we have enough uh, contributions. Uh, we got enough. If we got enough contribution to open that thing up, because this is kind of information that people have to book one-on-one -on -one sessions for me. Oh no, we're gonna have to get that up. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna need at least. We got almost ten, over nine thousand people in here. We're gonna need at least twenty more folks to drop twenty bucks on it before we open this up. Or we can just shut it down. 
But I would say this. If I'm not if I'm not a man, if, if I'm not going to be in the top 10% of earners by the time I'm 40, if I'm not in the top 10% of earners by the time I am 40, I would not marry. I would not marry. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I would not marry because you you don't have enough leverage. I would wait. I will consider marriage if I'm in the top 10% of earners. Now that's my, that would be me personally. Now, that may be a surprise to some folks. Why? Because they're like, you're an advocate for marriage. Not for everybody. I listen to women day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, saying they don't want average men. I'm not, if you know you're going to be a guy who's roughly in the, you know, 50, in, in the top 50 to in the 30 to 50%, you can still live a solid life. But I would not, no, 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 no. But that also means, just like the numbers for women, how are you going to retire? Well, see, this is where you get roommates. I think we're going to be going to a different model. Everybody living single, solitary by themselves, I don't think it's going to be possible. Because like it or not, the money is, this, if you don't have enough money to, well, having a roommate, having roommates lower your overhead as men. And men are, and it's easier for men to live as roommates for a long period of time. You guys can go in and get a home and live there for years. And you can even take the home and convert it and rent it out. This is much more a man's thing. So, uh, but, but you got to live in a happening part. You got to live. You have to live in an NFL and an NBA city. The, the city you live in needs to have an NBA franchise, an NFL franchise, and, and a Major League Baseball franchise. Those three things must be there. And you must live in the city, not 45 minutes outside of it, in the city. <clears throat> Recording in progress. Okay, here's what we're going to do. And I know a lot of ladies are like, well, he's giving them all. Yeah, I'm giving, I'm giving you guys the game. I'm giving you guys the game. If I were, if, like I said, if I were a young guy out here, I would be, you know, Atlanta is a great city. Um, but it also has its downsides. Um, one of the things I would focus on heavily is health, physical health, looking good, staying in good shape, and, and uh, and keeping your uh, and keeping your Johnson clean, man. One of the things that can screw you guys up a lot is having having a dirty willy. Guys, you do not want to be one of these guys out here uh, with these uh, surgic uh, these uh, these transmittable diseases. How about that? You don't want that. Okay, because, and understand something. This is why. Let's say, let's say you're going to be in the top ten percent of earners. This is where I'm about to get controversial. I am down for seeking arrangements. I am down for hiring sugar babies. I am down for, I if if I let's say I was going to be a guy earning over two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. I would rather. I could see a scenario, especially when you're younger, uh, rent the girlfriend experience. Get you a woman, put her on. It's like, get you a woman, put her on, uh, be her mentor is what it's called. Put her, give her an allowance 
and set the rules out up front and have her for three to six months. Because now you actually have room to actually test and everything else. Guys, I'm telling you, what did I, if you watch my Insta, if you remember my Patreon, I've talked about this. It is time to become ruthless and savage when we deal with women. And if you don't know what that means, go watch the Patreon. That does not mean be ruthless and savage to women when you're dealing with women. Because the one, one of the biggest ways you can risk things is as a man is how, in, how we interact with women. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring it in one at a time. Hmm. Go ahead and unmute. Your, your audio is not connected. So, guys, you're going to need to make sure when you come in to make sure to have your audio connected and be ready to go. Unmute yourself. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? I can now. How are you? Good. How are you? I am well. How old are you? Uh, 27. So, what's your question? Um, so, I just want to know... Um, so I just moved to Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. And I stayed by myself in a pretty, pretty nice apartment. Uh-huh. Um, I just want to know what, what would be my, because I have ties to Virginia and I have placed people that I um, have in Virginia that- what's, um, it, what's the question, homie? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, so what would be, my next step and pretty much advance in my life because in what I've already, direction, I've in what direction? Like, okay okay you're 27 you just moved to raleigh advancing your life in what direction professionally or personally um personally uh well, okay see this is what i mean uh, uh okay great example what do you want So there you go, I, guys, I'm sorry. see at your age, I'm asking you questions. You guys need to know what it is you want. What's yeah. the next step? How can I, if you're standing in the middle of a country and you ask me how, how, where do I go now? How can I tell you? I can only give you directions based upon the outcome you want. What do you want? So I've been investing. Um, I have property up in Virginia that- um, What do you want? 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 I want to, so I want- What do you want? I want to set an impression for my family and I want for your For your family- Yes. What family? what family? Uh my my brothers and sisters and my no, nieces. No, and no, 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 no. See, no. No. Live your life for you. Let your brothers take care of them. Let your nieces and nephews take care of them. You're 27 years old. And this has happens too far often with black men. You don't even have a youth. You don't have time to go out and do what I'm talking about. And that's why he doesn't know what he wants, people, because he wants to go from being a teenager to somebody's daddy. And to be a mentor and be on Mount Rushmore. You need to live your life for you. Did you have your niece or your nephew? Did you make your brother or your sister? I didn't. Then it's not your responsibility now, is it? That's true, yes. What would your father tell you? Um, go out here and live your life and uh be happy. Did your father make your niece? did your father make your brothers and sisters? Uh, no. Thank you. Raised by a single mother? Raised by my father. Raised by your father. Then what are these brothers and sisters you're talking about? Half brothers, half sisters. Hold Mom's on, side. Sorry. Okay, exactly. Son, husband. <laughs> Grab your balls and follow what your dad says. Leave your mother and whoever made them kids with your mama, let, them, let their daddy do it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I just why so many young men don't know what they want. They don't know what they want because you get robbed of a childhood because a lot of us become son husbands. Bump that. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hey, Kevin. Hey, how are you? I'm hanging in there. Brian here. How old are you? I'm 36. Okay, so you're a year over. What do we got? What's the question? I just trying to, I, I guess I just don't know where I'm at as part, I guess, is my, my SMV. Um, I make 150000 I'm an only child raised by a single mom. I'm paying for mom's condo right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, you know, you go on dating apps, you get nothing. And I go out to the mall. I, I feel like I got some style. I, I got, you know, a good well, let me Let me stop you right here. I'm telling you, the way you're coming across already is beta. What woman wants to date a man who's make, who's paying his mom's condo? She's 65. She don't have any money. What am I supposed that's to not, do? I, oh, I, hey, that's not what I asked. Now, is it? Look, General, you need to understand something. Just when I ask these women these questions, they have that same feeling too. What, is she, what are you supposed to do? Live like you're living. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm telling you, you're not coming across as a man who's at 36 who's living for him. Well, I mean, the it's our, the the paper's already dried, so I don't know what else to do right now. I, I well, I, 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 and the question I, I and the question I, I asked was a fair question. What woman would want to date a man? Well, what you know the answer. You 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 you're in a rock between a hard place because your mom mismanaged her life. So now you're stuck with her. The the scenario was she had some cash, so she put the down payment down, but I had the income, so I co-signed on her loan. Where's her husband? I I don't know my father. Okay. Your mom mismanaged her life, so now you're stuck with it. Yeah. Okay. And, All I mean, right. I mean, so, so, so this uh, and that's not what this show was really for, but see. Oh, my bad. This is what happens when guys become son husbands. No different than come mother daughter scenario. The mothers end up ruining their kids' lives because they ruin their own life. You're 36 making 100. You should be living your own life. But the question I ask you is what woman would want to step into this scenario? And you got offended because you know they wouldn't. And the energy in which you're walking around the way you're talking. I could pick up that you're not living your life on your own. And I don't envy your position because you love, you care about your mother, you love your mother, but the world still is what it is. Because yeah, it's a big red flag to hate your mother, isn't it? I hate your mother. I hate, see, this is what I mean. Hate your mother. If you died, what would happen? If you died she tomorrow, if you, if, you, if you got coronavirus and was, was gone by Christmas, what, what would happen to your mother? You think she, what do you think would happen? She would get my life insurance. <laughs> and then what would happen? I guess she'd cry for a bit, but. Uh, you think she'd jump in the, you think she'd jump in the casket with you? Well, I, I mean, I have thrown that in her face before, like, you know. I, that's not what I asked. No, no. No, of she'd figure not. it out. So unfortunately, young, unfortunately, I'm gonna give you some hardcore advice. You didn't know your father? Is he still alive? I don't know. Why don't you know? Uh, Ma, Ma won't tell me the truth, I guess. Well, he won't tell you the truth? His name's not on your birth certificate? It is. He did sign the birth certificate. Huh? What do you mean she won't tell you the truth? You know his name. I, I guess I never pursued it that hard. Um, thank it, you. Thank you. Thank you. You need therapy, man. You need therapy. Therapy. Yeah, therapy. I've Tried okay, I, okay, okay, because you're, it's you're, okay, you're 36. It's not practical yeah. advice. It's just telling you to like not think wrong, but I mean, objective reality exists, right? I mean, what do you mean it's not practical advice? What are you talking about? The CBT. CBT, what is that? Cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy and going to therapy and not bad thinking patterns and all, uh, jumping to conclusions and there's a list of them. So you don't think you need therapy? Oh no, I for sure. And I have and I have.
Why can't you hold your mother? Okay, let's go down this path. You're 36. You've never found your father? No. Why? I just felt like it's just, I mean, if he wasn't there for 36 years, why bother now? And then Maybe I because he didn't, why, why not find out? If your mother could do this to you, what the fuck do you think she could do to a man? I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guy, I'm just being honest. You're being a pussy. And you're, letting, you're sitting around letting your mother make you feel guilty. That's why I said, this is why I said long before, guys, you, need, you guys need to start holding your mothers accountable, forgiving your fathers, forgiving yourself, and get on with your life. But you want to believe your mother's bullshit. Woe was her. She had you and blah, 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 blah. You're too old for this, man. You're not, tw you're not 21. Your father's name's on the birth certificate. You don't know his side of the story. Why not go find it out to free yourself from this? Because honestly, it's not the dating apps and everything else. It's you. Why would a woman want to? You're making money. So what? Why would a woman want to deal with a man who doesn't, who's in this position? Well, it doesn't even get to that point. I mean, I talk about, I say, mention the dating apps because that's just the way it is right now. And, and No, it's the way it is for you. But if, I, if I go out to the mall, there's no single women walking around. You're full of shit. I'm, I'm serious. And I live in a trendy neighborhood. I mean, you're full of shit. Every, I want you, man, this is, there are no single women around, huh? No Every, single, I, no I single women. So what happened the last time you went to the mall and you went and talk and you went and approached a woman? Well, tell me what happened the last time you went to a mall and approached a woman. And, and they were always, I no, tell, me what, tell me, I don't want to hear they are. Well, tell me the, what happened the last time you went to a mall and approached a woman. I've never done that. Thank you. So how the fuck do you know if they're all single? Cause they're or they're the, all got relationships. Cause they're with a do, guy. Cause they're, cause they're with a guy. Do, all right, man. Book a session. Because you, you sound foolish. I go to a mall and every woman in there is with a guy and every woman is married. This is why you need therapy, trash okay. thinking, trash thinking. It's just, I don't know if it's thinking, it's just what I'm seeing. I just, I don't see available women. Okay, so this is the kind of guy that goes out to the lake to fish. And because he doesn't see any fish, he doesn't think there's any in the fucking water. It's called confirmation bias. And the reality is, even if, I, if there are women there, you don't have the confidence to approach them. And you're 36. So it's not the dating apps. It's you. And well, what are you going to do about it, though? Because the world doesn't give men these kind of outs. You got to do something about it, or you can wind. You know, you can keep. You because this comes this comes across to to the world as complaining, belly aching, and bitching. Because you haven't tried anything. I have had relationships with women. Okay. All right. Well, I've tried, but I, I, I you know. No. Nope. <laughs>
28. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. So what, what's the, what's the question? Um, I just, uh, was tuning in and, uh, just listening in. Um, and you were speaking about, you know, just, uh, building a network. Um, uh -huh. so I am a, uh, uh, what's, the question? what's the question oh um so really it's no real questions for so to speak oh, okay i need to get uh, to the guys you, who have, you want to, I, need to, I need to get to the guys who have the questions though mm -hmm. so if you don't have okay, any questions, no, no. okay i'm just no, gonna cool. have you uh, fall back for a second cool uh great show though great show appreciate Keep it going. my friend yes sir yeah all right, all right. thank you very much um mm -hmm. go ahead and hit that mute real quick yep so i will tell you guys that you know the reason I was so direct with him is because he wants to, guys like that are used to, to feeling sorry for themselves and playing the victim. And I get it, but it can also be a learned behavior. You got to get out and try. You can't say the world is this way and you ain't doing nothing. I mean, I want you to understand. He says, all the women, are, it's just, it's just the apps in the world. And what happened the last time you approached a woman? Oh, I've never done that because they're all married. They're all with somebody. Uh, that's what you see. That's not reality. So uh, go ahead, Johnny. Is that it? Hey, Kev, how's it going? Uh, uh, how old are you? I'm 29 years old. All right, what's the question? Um, it's not really a question. I just feel like I'm a little lost as of right now. I've been on like a long uh, journey of self-improvement. I'm two years sober and I lost 40 pounds. I got a job, two jobs actually, but I just have like an overwhelming feeling of where to go next at this point, you know? 29? So, I don't know. What do you want? Okay. Let me give you guys all... A, a bit of advice. When you want to get some advice, you have to come to the table with some work. What do you want? Where do you want to go? Because what a lot of you guys seem to want is some, you want somebody to tell you what to do. Right. So. I can't. I can't. I'm not sure. I can't. I don't know what you want. I don't know the outcomes you want. And this is why you guys need to get out here and try things. Because mm -hmm. the bigger issue is I'm kind of stuck. Okay, you're stuck. But if you're in a car stuck on the highway, AAA will come get you. They tow you somewhere. The car will be fixed. You'd have to point it in the direction and go somewhere. Where do you want to be by 50 years old? Uh, to be honest, in a high-rise apartment. <laughs> Okay, well, you can go to a high-rise apartment, but that, that doesn't tell me anything. Right. I okay. like, so I'm just like, well, like I said before, I'm in a, like, a self-improvement journey. Uh, so once I have but, like... But a high-rise apartment, you want to be living in a high-rise apartment. Well, obviously, I'm a, I'm a little person, and my goal I, is no, to be... No, no, no. The question is, do you want to, you want to be living in a high-rise apartment, yes or no? Yes. Do you want to have a, a, a wife or a girlfriend? I'm not so sure about that one yet. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Well, guys, I can't help you if you don't know where you want. I, this is why I said at 21 to 35, you guys need to be figuring out where you're going. Mm -hmm. That's where you need to be. I can't, you can't come and ask somebody, what do I do or where do I go? That's just not realistic. That's why I said, this is what I would be doing. If I were you guys age, I would be out here in a major city working two jobs, making enough money to hire my personal trainer, hire my coach. Like the guy that I talked to, not this last guy, but the guy before that, the dude making $150,000, you need to be hiring somebody like myself to keep their foot square in your ass. You don't need somebody who's going to coach you and coddle you. You need somebody that's going to break their foot off in your ass and get you from, from one place to another. But there's two things no coach can fix. Two things no one can deal with. Two things that I don't care how competent a person is, they can't deal with. And I need you guys to remember this going forward. Nobody can fix coward or lazy. And cowardice people and lazy people, when they don't get the outcomes they want, they blame people. So th th those kind of guys are the kinds that go to somebody's coaching or work with somebody 
And then because they're not Jack and the Magic Beanstalk, they'll go on a letter writing campaign and write bad reviews everywhere they can find it. They'd go book a course with this guy or that guy and this guy. And because it's not raining blondes, they would, they would write this. That guy would write negative reviews on Pinterest if he could. And that's why I need you guys to understand that um, in this journey of self-improvement, you have to bring something to the table. Lastly, when you're going to ask somebody for help, let me tell you when I was at work, when I was in corporate America, if I was going to go to somebody for help, I'm going to go and say, look, I'm trying to get this done. I've tried this, 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 this. I've read this. I've done this. I've done that. The person would then be able to help me because they see that I'm trying to do something and trying to work to an outcome. Lazy people, cowardice people say, I want to get over there. Help me. And that's not that person's job. Uh, all right, guys, if, you, if you're in the Zoom room and you're not on the and you're not on camera, I'm not going to bring you in. Uh, here we go. I bring up. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you, Mr. Samuels? Good. How old are you? Twenty-eight. All right. What's the question? Uh, I just got on right now, so I, I apologize. I'm at mm. work, and uh, that's okay. You don't have a question? Uh, the question. Well, if you don't, uh, if you don't, 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 don't make up one. If you have, if you just, no. if you, if you just got here. Don't make one up. Fall back a second. Go ahead. Let me, guys. Hello. What up, um, how you doing? Peace and wellness. Hello, how are you? Great. Uh, I had a question. How old are you before you? before we do that? How old are you, please? 31. 31. Uh, what's your question? What would you tell your 31-year-old self, well, single father self? He was uh, a single father. But... Uh, well... Um... Well, me, be detailed? Well, no, because I mean, what I would tell my single father self, I don't know. It'd be different than you. But the thing is, I would be different than yours because I don't know your position. I don't know your position. What do you do for a living? I'm in hospitality. Like, what does that mean? I'm in event planning. I'm the person. Huh? Event planning. Okay. Uh, how many hours a week are you working? I tell my single self that I need to be working 60 plus hours a week. That's a minimum because you got a kid. And what do you plan on doing uh, by age 55? I ain't, ask, I ain't think about that. Well, that's how does your child? Seven. Well, unfortunately, did you go, did you go to uh, college or you just finished high school? I took college credit courses. But you just finished high school? Yeah. Okay. So uh, unless you have some sort of skill or expertise, um, most people who finish high school are just hourly workers. Okay. So either you're going to go out and get some sort of profession because in this world, competence gets compensated or you got to work more hours. But that's, you're stuck in the position of not having enough money and not having enough skill to make any more money. So, right. well, then you got to do something about that. So you're going you're gonna to have to lose a whole lot of sleep Or you're going to be at the or at the mercy of working paycheck to paycheck until and not really get ahead. One thing I would also do is I'd make sure I have no more children. Are you in a relationship right now? No. That's why I, that was really the question I wanted to ask you. But you really answered it. I shouldn't be worried about dating or finding her mother. Oh, no, no, just... no, no. You're already in a bad enough position. 
you know, I mean, due respect to 31, you don't really sound like you have any, any plans for the future. Um, yeah, and you were, I do, but you made me think even further. I never thought about 50, 50 like 55, because mm -hmm. I didn't think I was going to make it to 21. I didn't think I was going to make it to 18. Okay. So that's what I mean. You have to start asking yourself, what do, what is life going to look like at 50? Um, one, make no more children. Two, I don't know. I can't go ahead and get in all this, but you need more work to invest into some sort of skills, get you a trade, and 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 increase your earning potential. Uh, because unskilled labor are the first people, men and women, who are going to be cut out of this economy as they're switching to automate automation. Uh. At, you're going to run the risk in the next 20 years of not having any kind of job. I mean, if you look, if you're going to McDonald's and things like that, they got kiosks in there where people used to be. And you don't want to get stuck at the bottom of the income. Uh, but make no more babies, man. That's the number one thing. And also, uh, on a side note, um, at 31 years old, I would say that when you start introducing yourself to somebody who's a stranger, you want to go formal before you go informal. All right. That's how I like how when I greeted you, I said, hello, how are you doing? You want to, I would suggest doing that. Um, it, it'll, it'll bode well for you as you continue to, to grow and mature. But all the best, man. Peace out. I'll do, the, I'll do a consultation soon with you. We'll talk. Okay, have a good day. All right. So, guys, if you're, if you're not, if you're not going to be in the top, uh, 20% of earners if you're not plan if you're not on if you're not on task or planning or working to be in the top 20% of earners you you're really putting yourself uh at the mercy of things outside of your control I would suggest doing that hello Eric uh, yes, sir. How old are you? I'm uh, 26. 26. Uh, all right. What's the question? Um, yes, sir. Uh, so I'm wondering uh, what you would recommend for people who are looking to expand their network, um, particularly in the engineering field. Um, what state do you, what city do you live in? Uh, so I'm in Princeton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to school? Um, <clears throat> to school in Boston. It's uh, called Wentworth. What, what, how many, how many, is it a four year degree? Uh, yes, sir. How many people attended Wentworth? Um, maybe about, I mean, there was a small, uh, graduating class, maybe like less than a hundred. It was an applied oh. math, uh, degree. Oh, so okay. Kind of niche. Okay. Uh, well, first off, I would, I would, I normally would say go to the school of alumni association. Hmm. Um, but you don't have that. Um, who are you working for a large organization? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Um, do they have any kind of community work that, that, that they have uh, that is available to employees that is like a give back? Uh, like yes, sir. Get involved? Uh, heavily involved in philanthropy. Huh? Uh, they're heavily involved in philanthropy. There you go. Volunteer. Yeah. Just a whole lot of that. Um, well, you got to start. Well, you got to start somewhere, though. Mm hmm. You got to start somewhere. I mean, you said for in engineering and at 26, right. you, mm -hmm. you can't necessarily just go into engineering. You got to start with people. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a city, I've already said it. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the largest, the, whether you're a religious person or not, churches are a great place. Where do the business people go? Where are the, where the movers and shakers in the city go? Uh, the American Heart Association, um, there, 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 there are organizations um, like um, in Dallas, there's something called the Petroleum Club. You, you have to start looking for things to get involved in and philanthropy and, and, and charity is a great way to get started. Uh, all right, let me get to the next person. Yeah, guys, if you, coll your colleges are a great place to start too. Uh, who is this? Unmute yourself, Martin. Oh, how's it going, Ken? How Good are you? question. How, how old are you? Good and you? Uh, yeah. Um, right now, 
I work as a concierge. How old are you? How old are you? Oh, 28. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I want to know how can I make over six figures? Like, like by the time I'm like 32, 33. How old are you? 28. What's your degree in? Don't have a degree. Why do you want to make over six figures? Um, so I can invest and like open my own business. Going back to school next semester for cybersecurity. Um, well, all you guys need to understand something. And in this world, competence gets compensated. What are you a subject matter expert at? Where have you invested 10,000 hours into becoming proficient in anything? 10,000 hours is music. five years. Okay, music don't pay nothing. All right. So you, um, coding, like IT. Okay. You five, you've had five years, five full-time years in that. On and off. Like, I had no, like no, contact no, no, jobs. No, 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 no. 10,000 hours straight. I would say security. What security, security doing what? Like museums, concerts, bouncing. Then you can't, then, then, sir, you don't, you're not, you don't, you're not, okay. High income skills. You don't have high income skills, so you don't get a high income. Okay. That's, that's how it is for us as men. There's no such thing as free money. We all want money, but you got to go out in the market and exchange it. Uh, there are a lot of people saying truck driving, but I'm going to be honest that I like it. The fact that you have to really work your ass off to break six figures. I like it that way. I don't want everybody to be out there because you've got to be willing to do the work. Gotcha. So the 10,000 hours, meaning like when I was a young salesperson, you start out as an entry level salesperson, you have to put in hours to become better prospecting try and fail do get better you needed five years of full-time 40 hour week 40 a work week is 2000 hours you need five years of 2000 hours to even be considered proficient at something so i wouldn't worry so much well yeah you need to worry about the money but uh, you need to get something that where you gonna can become a an expert at something that that you can exchange on the open market for for money. And you can't. Gotcha. Uh, what's the longest job you? What's the longest you've ever had one job? Two and a half years. No. Uh, a couple of other questions. Uh, how tall are you? I mean, uh, how much do you weigh? Two hundred six one. 261? No, I'm six one. I'm like one ninety five, two hundred pounds. Okay. Uh, okay, it's really important. That's it's really important for us men to stay in physical and good physical health because we need we need to be able to uh, work longer hours, uh, and and that's one of the biggest things: health. So your physical health, your diet is very important. Um, successful men who are successful share a lot of things in common. They tend to focus on they tend to focus on a very narrow subject matter subject matter. They tend to become very proficient in that. They tend to be very healthy, uh, very health conscious, uh, and they do it for you know ten plus years. That's why the rewards are so great because. Uh, the input is so difficult. That's why that and the, and six figures, if it were really adjusted for inflation, that six figures should really be around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, not not just a hundred thousand. So when it when that six figure thing came out, it was something else. Let me go ahead and unmute. Uh, this brother in the blue, then Gary, then this other guy. Go ahead. Hello. Hey, good evening. How are you doing? Kenji good. Francois. Good. How old are you? Um, 32. 32. So what's the question? All right. I didn't really catch the monologue. I got on with you a little later. But um, one question that I would like to present is um, I'm an electrical engineer. And uh, 
if you had somebody in your network that can do like coaching for like business or like just running your own business, that would be something useful for me just taking on my next steps. Um, I do a lot of contracting right now. I do power engineering. I've worked on like lasers and I do work for the Navy. Uh -oh. So I don't but, understand. Um, if I had somebody in my network, what are you, what are you referring to? Oh, just, just an open-ended question. Like if that's something that you have access to in your deck of cards, like I would like somebody oh. who could really, like the, oh, you talk no. about personal trainer, but somebody who could like kick my ass and help me like with the process of whether I want LLC or corporation or like the well, purposes well, of the well, well, you're talking about a business. You're talking about a general business coach. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, no, not specifically, but okay. Th this is why, but yeah, that, that's kind of off of what. But um, what's your budget for that? I mean, I, I make um, 160 about, so I I can pay for it. I just. I just need somebody who. Well, the the, the reason right I, the, the, see that's the reason. But the first question I asked was your budget, so you can start so understanding. No, you, I, I don't know how much that would cost, but if well, it was this, this is where the Google search. This is where the Google. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Okay, I don't have a a, a referral for you, but okay. if you have a budget in mind, you go and do a simple Google search: business coaches, in in the comma the industry or whatever. And then to start looking, because like um, everything is like going to college. There are high ends and low ends, but you need to apply, have a budget. And I get, I got to get to somebody else. But, um, guys, I'm going to also tell you, if you're not planning to invest at least $10,000 in, in a calendar year, don't even get started. Uh, oftentimes, guys would just want to, you know, you, you want guys want million dollar business ideas for $500. Fuck that. I'm 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 your guy. But I'm telling you the truth. You're not prepared. That's why I said go get a part time. You got a part time job at a convenience store making fifteen dollars an hour. That's an additional fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, after taxes you're bringing home about twelve fifty, twelve thousand five hundred. You take fifty percent of that and invest it, um, and take in that what's six thousand. Then you still got six thousand more dollars to deal with, guys. You got to be willing to invest. Hiring somebody who will talk to you for two hundred dollars an hour, man, please. You might as well, you might as well go to the strip club. Hey, how are you? How you doing, Kev, man? I'm good. How old are you? Uh, twenty eight. All right. So, what's the question? First of all, happy Thanksgiving. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. Kev, man, to be honest with you, bro, I'm having issues with attracting black women. <laughs> all right. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. What city you live in? I'm I'm in Detroit. Well, there you go. <laughs> what you mean, man? You think it's, it's Detroit? The only thing worse <laughs> than Detroit is Chicago and and Philly. Hey, but you know what? It's a it's a few eye catches out here. Okay. It's a, it's it's a few that catch my eye. You know what I'm saying? Uh, catch you gonna catch something else too? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> You, you could be you right. Could, you couldn't pay me to go to Detroit to try to find them. Are you kidding? Where you at? You in Atlanta, right? Yeah, but Detroit's a dead city. It's a dead city. Yeah. Who? Okay. Who in the chat room? Who in the chat room would be eager to go to Detroit to live? Come on now. Hey, it's Detroit's shit, up and man. Coming. It's up and coming. When is that? No, it's no, here? it's not. Yes, it is. Okay, see, when you, the last sound, time like, you sound like the, okay, man. Okay, I, all I have to know is what happened to, Detroit damn near went bankrupt, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. So why are you, why are you, you sound like these women who don't want to deal with the fact that they're, that they're average. I mean, is your last name Detroit? Do you own, <laughs> do, you, do you own a bridge or something in that bitch? No. Why are you so loyal to Detroit? Detroit you know sucks. What? My family is here, so. So what, Detroit? I don't Detroit, know. the automobile, when the auto and the American auto industry tanked, Detroit and the and the Midwest took a hit. It came That's back true. a little bit under Obama, but the, what's the what do we hear out of Michigan? Lead in the water. 
That's what When's the do. last time did we hear anything good about Detroit? And I know people who are in Detroit, and they're trying to get the hell out of Detroit. Oh, man. I can't see not one person in here that says they want to move to Detroit. You know what? I, I, I'm not going to say it's the best place to, to, if I wasn't, if my family wasn't from here, I probably wouldn't. That's not, I, I don't, I don't, but that's not, but you're saying, but you came in and Francisco. said, okay, uh, well, you came in and said, I can't find, I'm having a problem attracting black women. You're having a trouble dealing with reality. And we sat here, just had, we just sat here and had, a, man, I'll bring another brother in. I'm, 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 hold on. Uh, Gary, I meet yourself. What do you think about, would you like to move to Detroit, Gary? Oh, hell no. no. Okay, appreciate it. Tell this brother Gary, what the, where, where are you from, Gary? I'm from Dallas, man. Thank you. Oh, All you Dallas. gotta do is be from Earth. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no Detroit for me. All right, so what y'all so what y'all saying then? If my only chance is to move out of Detroit and find look, one. man, if if you had to find a place with some of the most difficult women to deal with, Detroit, Philadelphia, and Chicago are at the top of the list, just like if you had to pick some of the poorest states in the union. Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana would be at the bottom. What okay. have you ever heard of fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive women coming from Detroit or Philadelphia? They are Middle Eastern, if anything. <laughs> I asked a question. When have you ever heard of this? Right. Thank you. Right. So why, I mean, so I mean, we spent five minutes going back and forth on your 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 issue with Detroit. Well, if I, how many black women want to move to cold ass Detroit? Out of ten, probably probably two, <laughs> maybe two out of ten. Right now, Dallas, Houston, Austin, uh, Atlanta, Charlotte. Right. Shit. Charlotte for sure. Yep. Charlotte? Charlotte? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Charlotte for sure. Charlotte is where Atlanta was probably about 20 years ago. I met I've met so many beautiful black women from Charlotte in the last two months. I was telling somebody the other day, like, what the hell? Charlotte got it going on like a big old Shit, you better yeah. carry it. And, and you, it ain't, it ain't, and it's not freezing cold in Charlotte. Charlotte, I ain't taking my ass to Charlotte then. You, what? Well, you need to leave Detroit. Hey, I got fam here. I can't leave yet. Uh, okay. you have children? No, sir. What do you mean you got family? My, like my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my nieces. What kind of shit are you talking about? Hey, your mama man. got a your mama got a husband, right? Yeah. And your sister got what? Yeah, she does. She does too. <laughs> so everybody else got a life, but you. I got a life. No, no, no. no. Everybody else got a fan, a life. I mean, a life and family. Oh yeah, yeah, a wife. Yeah. Okay. For the most part. All right. So. Right. See, I'm always fascinated when I get men who say one thing and then you get all of these different options, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you want to win on your terms and make it convenient. Right. Uh, excuse me. Nigga, play. nigga, play. <laughs> nigga, nigga, please. Nigga, nigga. Okay, so, okay. And what did I say earlier? Two things coaches can't fix coward and lazy. That's lazy, man. How's that lazy, bro? How's that lazy? Is it, is it, is it, let me ask you a question. Is it lazy that I don't want to have to go to Charlotte to find a, a decent, how's that lazy? Cause you're still complaining about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's real. And you're a man, you're not supposed, I mean, you really want me to go there. I'll go there, man. You sound like these women I talk to. Oh. You know. Okay. You, okay. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you, another brother. I mean, I'm in Atlanta. He's in Dallas. Are you? I, you don't have to go to Detroit to know Detroit is not bank. It's not hitting. The auto industry was what kept Detroit afloat. 
Detroit, damn, this, didn't, the, didn't the school system, didn't the government go bankrupt? Didn't you guys, did, that was, what happened? That was didn't years you, ago. I wasn't even, I was, yeah, it did. Uh, oh, so right. it's bounced back and it's a fucking booming metropolis now. If, if Downtown Detroit, yes. Then where are all the, then where are all the uh, single professional women moving there? If you have come, I'm not going to lie to you guys, Gary, I see you still unmuted. If you guys have come to downtown Detroit in the past three to five years, you know, you then will you see that. Have, then you should, then, then, then Gary, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have any problems. Then should he? He shouldn't have hey. any issues at all. He shouldn't have any problems. But you know what? It's it's not about just. No, nah, man. No, nah, man. No, nah, man. Stop. No, stop. Let me just. Okay. No, nah, no, nah, man. Stop. Man, you make you, you. I'm telling you to stop because you're making yourself sound crazy. No, I'm not. Let me listen. There to you me, are. Guys. This is the need to be right. All right. No, it's not. Okay. Dude, That's, the people right. in the chat room, all the men in the chat room, dude, you're wrong. I don't care about them, what they, what they think. I'm just telling you. It's not about. Well, we don't care about what you got to say then. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, man, what's going on? I, I, I won't take this shit from a woman or a man. And, I, and, and a man I got less respect for. Your mom and your daddy live there. Your sister got a family. And you complaining about what? Stop talking. Ain't nobody listening to you. You're muted, man. Hey, Gary, what's going on, man? Let him keep on talking to himself. How you doing, partner? I'm good, man. How are you, Kevin? We tried. We tried, bro. We I, tried. I, I was hearing him, and I was just <laughs> tried. About... This dude is he's Detroit Brown. Eminem will be proud, man. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, man, I, I traveled a lot of different places. I lived in Japan. I lived in Atlanta. I lived mm-hmm. in California, everywhere. And, you know, I, you just got to go where your opportunities are. I man, I know people who live in Detroit. I know. And I tell you, I don't just say stuff. Detroit and Philadelphia, some mm-hmm. of the roughest women in the black women in the country. Yeah. Chicago, Chicago. 10 years ago is different than Chicago now, but Chicago is even up there. So what's the question you got? Oh, the co- yes. The question I have for you is like, uh, just kind of like I'm on it. I'm kind of at this impasse in my career, right? Where mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out whether I want to go, uh, go up with the uh, management level, things like that. Or do I want to go uh, more or less like going with uh, just doing things on my, for myself, going to my own business, or maybe kind of doing like consultant work for my industry. Well, have you, have you ever, have you ever hired, have you ever had direct report employees? Um, I've had a team, but not necessarily they were my direct reports. I had the opportunity to take that position, but I turned it down for the higher and How old are you again? I'm 38. Hmm. Well, and how long have you been in your industry? Um, I've been in education for since I was 21, but I got out of that and I recently became like an, an ID for about eight years now. Okay. So two tracks. One, if you go out and start, would you start a business in consulting? Or what? Yes. Uh, well, I have a side business now, but I kind of figure like that's kind of like a, a kind of a jump start for that entrepreneurial well, thing. But. See, okay, so if you started your own business, mm-hmm. the, the issue is never really being able to be good at the thing you're good at. It's getting yeah. enough clients. Yeah. And as an individual contributor, unless you were a high level individual contributor, you probably don't have enough clients to take with you to start a business. Number one. Number two, um, it's hard to scale a business when you don't have uh, management experience or supervisory experience. Mm. So uh, if I were in this general position with knowing what little I know, I would, I would look to go to the next level, hang out for another 24 to 36 months with my eye headed out the door, take all of the resources the company is going to put into me, as far as management training, uh, uh, any, any any kind of systems I can learn, uh, and then uh, I would be keep my eye open, or what, who who and what I'd want to take with me, like Jerry Maguire, and then I'd leave. Um, but jumping right from in- contributor to starting on business, to, it's very risky. It's very risky. Very risky. It is, and. 
like I was saying, I kind of want to know, like, uh, what inspired you to go ahead and take that leap whenever you did it? Uh, well, when I was in telecommunications, the whole industry fell apart. Oh. I didn't have a choice. The industry went bankrupt. You don't know where MCI or any of these companies, they're gone. And when I was in office products, the industry consolidated. Uh, when I was in advertising, um, again, the industry went from radio, TV, billboard, newspaper, direct mail to uh, digital. Um, and I got tired of seeing the industries trending towards the same thing. So I did exactly what I, what I told you. I, I started looking. I'm like, I'm not going to go get another job, work for another company and contribute and make to their bottom line and just get paid a lot of money to where when I lose my job, it all goes away. So I, I, uh, me and a, a colleague of mine that worked at the same place, we started our own business and took clients with us. That's exactly what we did. And I, and I saw that happening in telecommunications. I saw people working for companies like Quest and MCI who were, who were locked into a company structure. They would go start their own LLCs and they were making agreements with MCI themselves and they were selling MCI products under their umbrella to the same customers that they would, would have been selling to while at MCI. They had better pricing. Um, so that's why. Because at the end of the day, the most expensive uh, line item for any, buy, any company is, is human capital, labor. Yes. So there's going to come a point in time to where they can find someone cheaper to do your job at roughly 80%. So I'd always want to be a, be above that power curve. I I would say move out before they push you out. Yep. Move out before they push you out. All right. All right. all right. Let me go ahead. Hey, how are you? I'm good, man. How about yourself? Good. How old are you? I'm 21. All right. So what do you what question do you have for me? Uh, so some questions I got for you, man. All in honesty. So, what are some strategies or what are some ways that helped you out in the corporate business. So I'm in sales, selling cars, and uh, see a lot of competition coming. Selling go. cars? Yes. Are you selling for a, who you, a dealership or a luxury? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, GM, Chevrolet, selling for a well, pretty I'm much be, a huge I'm a, franchise. I'm going to be honest, man. Um, and this is just my personal take. I've never liked car sales. Uh, because they throw you guys in there with these high ticket, with these high pressure tactics. Right. Um, and they really don't get, and, and the issue I have is you don't, you don't really have an underlying sales philosophy like D I Zig Ziglar, Dale Carnegie, the ledge, you don't have an underlying sales philosophy. So it's pretty much somebody walks on the lot and you use your charisma, your, your, your ability to build rapport, but it's still uh, that kind of sales. I would, if you're gonna be going to sales, I would try to actually get a job in business to business sales, medical equipment, um, something like that, because car dealerships, that's, that's a high burnout profession. Yeah. Lots of addiction. Um, Very and true. unless you're gonna be selling for you know, a Lux model, a Lux luxury dealer, um, which is at 21, that'd be kind of hard to break into selling for like, you know, those. Uh, but uh, I understand. If, if, if I were you, though, I would take about, I would take some, what, what city are you in? I'm in Indianapolis. Uh, I'd get out of Indianapolis. I know that. Yeah, Indiana. <laughs> yeah, just like I told a dude from Detroit, I'd get out of Indianapolis. I know that much. Oh, um, no, I, I, I completely agree. Mm -hmm, I yeah, completely yeah, agree. Yeah. He, he fighting for Detroit. What kind of shit is but, that? Uh, but yeah, I would take nah, some... Indy, yeah. I know, because it, it, cause it's right there, and it's all in the same area. I would take, uh, if I were going to... Sandler, S-A-N-D-E-L-R, Sandler Training. So okay. Get, get some training on basic prospecting, um, cold calling, and overcoming objections. Uh, and as a... Uh, that will help you in your current uh, position because you can use those skills. Uh, 
to help make more money. And if you were going to go try to interview for a, a position in business to business, you can say, I, I got a sandler certification in this. And you could say that you bought it yourself, which shows some initiative to a would be employer. I understand. I appreciate it so much, man. No problem. All right. Let me get up out of it. Got a few more. Go ahead and drop out, please. Uh, and after that, let me get these two. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. How old are you? I'm 22. All right. So what's the question? My question is, um, I want to join the military. And I was wondering if that's the um, best option for me at this point. Well, let me ask some questions. What were your grades like in high school? I was a CB student, more right. on the math. Uh, did you go to college? No. All right. Um, which state do you live in? I'm in Illinois. Uh, oftentimes, I do recommend young men going to college. Yep. I mean, I'm going to the military. Yep. It's either that or you know, go to get some sort of, or some sort of professional certification. Um, but yeah, um, I often, uh, it's often the best of bad choices because if the bottom line is if you don't have any high end skills or a profession, you're just going to be a minimum wage worker out here trying to do hourly jobs with no skill set. Um, but you know, I would go in and, and if I would go in, I'd stay at least 10 years though. So you can come back with half a pension. I think that's number 10 years. Like uh, a lot of my family members, they got their 20. Um, it's either that or go plumber, electrician, blue collar tradesman, certified, uh, certified trade. Um, because yeah, going to, I wouldn't recommend just going to college unless it's science, technology, engineering, math. Um, yeah. And if I were going to go to the military, um, I think I would probably join the Navy um, over the over the, oh yeah yeah the Navy these days I think Navy because I don't know if you really get a chance to decide where you would go in the Army I would want to travel uh, the Marines I know a lot of people went to Marines but you know that's different so yeah I go uh, are you an only child do you have any brothers sisters what I'm the oldest of two a brother and sister and when, you have a were you raised with your mother and father. Yes. What does your father say? He wants me to go. Leave. Yep. Go become a man. Uh, enjoy. Uh, use condoms. Don't make babies. Always. No, 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 no. Understand that military men look like huge licks out here. Huge targets for, uh, for succubuses. These women hang around military bases and ports of call or whatever, and they love to drop babies on military men to get them Uncle Sam benefits. Fuck no, no babies. No babies, repeat after me. No babies? No babies. No babies? <laughs> no babies. No babies. No babies. Thank you, no babies. All right, enjoy young man. All right, let me get this dude over. Yeah, no babies, man, no babies. Fuck all that, man. Hello, how are you? I can't hear you, man. You're, you're muted. Can you hear me now? I can. How old are you? I'm 28. All right. So what's the question? I'm just calling in more for confirmation or critique. On, on what? In what regard? So prior military, prior army. Uh -huh. um, I'm prior military, prior army. Mm -hmm. Currently getting my finances in order and taking control of my future. Mm -hmm. I am working about 55, 60 hours a week, taking 40% of each check, investing it into the financial markets, crypto stock mm -hmm. for an mm -hmm. exchange mm -hmm. and learning that skill as well to rely on myself for income and yeah. generate it through the markets. And my goal is by the time I'm 50, to have enough income from dividends and or generation. So, what, so what's the, the question? Market. So what's the question? More or less on the psychology, just to make sure I'm either on the right track. Well, where or are the people? Where are the people? Where are the people? 
Where are the where are the people in your life? There's really none. Thank you. That's the big hole. Life is about people. The money making opportunities that you can make are only amplified with an active network. That's what I stressed at the beginning. If I were twenty one to thirty five, I would live in a in a happening geography, NFL, NBA, uh, ML, Major League Baseball. Uh, I would be having roommates, and I would be. But then the next part is you got to build your wolf pack, that three to five, the three to five man network that's going to keep you honest uh, and help you expand yourself. It's a force multiplier. Everything you're doing right now seems on task. And if you had five, three to five people of like mind in different industries, you got instant people to travel with. Let's say you meet, you get three, you get three other wolves. And then you decide, and uh, y'all want to go to the Dominican Republic or Brazil. You don't have to travel by yourself. An opportunity comes up, a, a property that you can buy. I don't know, just you need a wolf pack. We cannot be out here by ourselves. Black men in particular, we are, we, we are, we are like Highlander. We try to get out of here and be Han Solo. Fuck that. We need to be a group, moving in groups. So that's, the, that's the whole but in order to, in order to do that you got to find like-minded people and you got to go in and deliver value to them before you extract value there's a book gentlemen called give jab 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 right hook from gary vaynerchuk the premise is give 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 then ask delivering value to people is the surest way i mean think about it. it's thanksgiving and i'm out here doing what delivering value to Men, people who I don't talk to typically, but it's because when you deliver value to men, men tend to pay that back. Network, you got to have a network. Network, network is survival. Okay, good job. Yes, sir. I'm going to write those down now. All right, word, well, word, it'll be on, it'll be on the replay. Uh, Jamal, hello. Good evening, Mr. Samuels. How are you? Very well, thank you. I'm 39 years old. Okay, 39? That's right. Okay, go ahead. Got a question, a uh, request. I would like to improve my relationship with my dad. Unfortunately, I got messed up um, due to, uh, I don't want to blame anyone, but hey, help. Uh, marriage between my father and my mother. Um, the, the man is uh, remarried and got kids. And uh, he tried to get me, you know, to build a relationship with uh, my half. Okay, I'm, I'm having a hard time. You sound a little girl. You said you want to improve your relationship with your father? That's right, yes. Where is, uh, where, where is he located? Uh, he's located back home in North Africa. Okay. When was the last time you spoke? Last year, when I visited home. Any particular reason why you haven't made a phone call? Sorry, say again. Any particular reason you haven't made a phone call? Uh, don't want to get into much of the details, but uh, I, well, to be honest, I got way too much emotional. This is the actual trouble. And uh, I just wanted to build on that from now on. And Okay, okay, I'm having a little, look. If you want to, rep if you want to repair a relationship, you got, you got to, re you have to make contact. Right. Uh, it's been a year. Or eventually, he won't be here. I know. I know. That's why I'm worried about. So, uh, so we'll make, pick up the phone and call. It's not brain. It's not brain science or rocket surgery. Okay. So, can I ask a second question? So, what okay. I, I got. I, okay. That's not what this broadcast is about. But okay. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to help you out. But and you're and you're past the age too. At 39 years old, look, I didn't have a great relationship with my father. I had a lot of reasons to be upset, but I got over my need to be right. I got over my need to be right and have it shit my way, and I'm the better for it. If this is bothering you at 39 years old, get over your need, getting over your right to be right, and make a phone call. You're right. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh.
Yeah, guys, we got to get over our right to be right. Go ahead. Hello? Hey, good evening, Kevin. How are you? How old are you? Uh, 24. All right. So what's the question you have for me? Okay. Uh, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. And second of all, um, thank you. what are some um, consistent habits that you typically see in aspiring uh, high earning men around the age 24? Like what, what are habits that I should either already, already have or be developing? Habits? habits? Yes. Habits. Uh, they work 60 hours a week or more. Um, they are, they work out five times, four to five times a week and are health conscious. Mm -hmm. Um, they actually take money they're making from the additional job and then hire coaches. They don't just look at videos and look for it free. They pay their way. Uh, and then they move to where the action is and they go out and risk. They okay. go out and risk. The first person I talked to, the second guy I talked to, talked about how he's 36 and all these women and such and so forth and blah, blah, and he ain't tried nothing. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's why I outlined at the beginning of this broadcast where I would physically place myself if I were that age in the middle See, of it. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous how many people come on your show and they come in like with dead set on a conclusion that they draw about like women for example the guy the 36 year old guy he it's says okay. all the women all the women at the malls are are married and stuff and that's then you okay. ask them okay what happened the last time you that's talked okay. to her but that's okay that means there's just more for you okay. facts all. facts more. exactly They're more for exactly. you exactly it's great right, to see man, but see, and the thing is this is why i say you have to be willing to hire coaches you got to be willing to pay for it because um it's what's one of the things that I did when I was in my mid twenties, I took 5,000 very hard earned dollars and I, and I invested it in a different mindset and it, and it's still paying dividends to this day. Um, paying for knowledge, paying for knowledge and not just trying to pick it up and reading the book, books and things and videos like that are supplemental one-to-one -one knowledge transfer from qualified professionals is the is the way to go okay let me get to the next person uh hold on all right need some water yes yes they drink water here it is you need to drink water i'm gonna drink it oh oh that's some good stuff all right uh, mute yourself, Anthony. Hi, can you hear me? I can. How old are you? Oh, hi. Uh, uh, first, I'd like to say Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm 32. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. So what do you got for me? Uh, so my question is uh, about uh, security or uh, recommendations for uh how does how you would go about um, providing some level of economic security for your your family uh, in these times? You know, um, I got interested in your broadcast because uh, how I, I, I would provide economic security. Uh, right. Uh, that's a, that's kind of outside of this broadcast. This broadcast is really for guys from twenty one to thirty five. What I would do if I was in that age range. Um, yeah. Go to go go watch Pocket Watching with JT or some of the financial channels. Uh, it's not I I don't I try not to I, I try to stay in my lane. Man. Okay. <laughs> stay. okay, thank you. Well, I I guess my my question was more towards um, how you felt about marriage. Uh, uh, I've already said if I'm not if I'm in the top ten percent, I wouldn't consider it if I wasn't in the top ten percent of earners. Yeah, what? well, as someone who who is or who will be. Uh, are you shortly okay uh, do you, you are you married though i'm not do you want children i uh, i just had a son okay how many kids do you have uh just one okay so you have the kid when you, when you didn't marry his mom that's correct 
So, um, you know, we had planned on marriage uh, shortly in the future. Um, you know, just uh, things happened a little bit out of order. Uh, and, uh, you know, we welcomed my son not too long ago. Are you guys still uh, together? Uh, we are. We are. We actually plan to get married uh, shortly. But, um, you know, we, we've kind of been thinking a lot about uh, marriage and, you know, some of the pluses and minuses at this point. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, now I'm, about, now I'm about to go there. Look, man, you got a kid with this woman. You're talking about planning on marriage. What do you mean plan? Go to the justice of the peace. Do you want to marry the woman or not? <laughs> yes. Then what the fuck are we talking about? Well, you know, I think some. No, 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 no. What are we talking about? You have the child. You you didn't do some things out of order. You're 34. You know how sex happens. You know how this happened. Do you want another man raising your child? Uh, No, sir. What the fuck are we talking about? (laughs) And see, this is why you need a wolf pack, gentlemen. Because when we start getting mealy mouth and start being around the bush, this shit happens. Look, you made the baby. You made the baby. And if you don't want to marry her, Okay, but if you want to marry her, stop beating around the bush and get on to it. Okay. I mean, I don't know what else you want me to... I mean, how I feel about marriage as a general concept is one thing, but in your specific situation, if you don't marry her, do you want any more children? Uh, No, sir. So you only... Okay, if you... How many children would you like to have if you were married? Uh, probably two. All right. So if you don't marry her, you're not having any more kids. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Seems pretty simple to me. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. For, I'm, <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> what the, what the holdup is. I mean, What's going on with the world and everything else? I mean, I don't. That's not y'all's situation, right? Uh that's correct. I mean, um, you know, it, I think just did she uh, wants. Does she want to marry you? So until uh, the it's a yes or not for new. No, there you go. All right, there we go. So you want to marry her? That's correct. But she don't. Okay, this is the problem. All right, he, the person that carries the least has, has the most power. She has your kid. I don't know, man. You shouldn't have got her pregnant. You shouldn't have got a woman pregnant that didn't want to marry you. It's not a good position. Yeah. But that's the position you find yourself in. Uh, I'm going to give you some practical advice. Uh, what does she do for a living? Uh, she's an artist. Holy shit. Call the lead attorney, get, you, get custody of your kid. You're fucked. You're fucked. Uh, we live together. So I don't give a uh, shit. You're yeah. fucked. An artist that didn't want to marry you. And then she got pregnant. And you're going to be a six figure plus earner. That's right. An artist, uh, yeah. an artist, an actress, what? Uh, uh, say that again, I'm sorry. What kind of artist? Um, she does uh, beauty. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And does, she, and does she earn, does she earn any money? Uh, she does all right for herself. I mean, it's nowhere near what, what right. I mean. Right, so get your kid. <laughs> So I'm, I mean, I'm trying to make it light, man, but the woman didn't want to marry you. See, here's the problem with us as men. We start, we decide, we invest too much in women who don't want us, and then we try to make a square peg fit in a round hole. If the woman wanted to marry you, she'd have married you. She's an artist. You're going to be a six-figure earner. And she decided to have a baby because, I don't know, but it is, a, it is, it is, in this country, it's 17%. If if you guys split up for some catastrophic reason, who will be the better person to raise the child? You or her? Uh me. Then get your fucking kid. Mm. 
will I have them? Uh, no, know, physical, no. Like you be proactive. You get physical custody. You put her on child support. This is where we fuck up as men. See, this, this is the kind of guy who in 18 months, he's going to get served papers and he's going to be as confused as hell and she's going to have taken the initiative and he's going to end up getting six to 17 percent of his income uh and she's going to and you're going to get become weekend dad yeah because she's an artist you're an established person you knew that that's what it is uh, bro come on man you you made a baby with a with, a, with an artist okay that's cool she didn't want to marry you though so either you either you marry her and take your chances but now I see it. She didn't want to marry you. So get your kid, put her on child support, and go live the pursuit of happiness with a Y. Or believe in the power of sunshine, fairy tales, and leprechauns and hope that your situation doesn't turn out like 99% of the, like as 99% of the chance it will be because she didn't want to marry you. Mm hmm. Okay, so you know, I, you, I I'm just curious if if you don't mind. So does the fact that initially she didn't want to marry me make marriage now seem like a dangerous prospect? Is it is it safer to? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So it would be be, yes, to... yes, yes. It seems like a more dangerous prospect. Yes. What does she have going on that was so great and wonderful that she want to marry you? Thank you. What's changed? I think perspective. Okay. Well, those are your options. I think some of the things that I, you are this, this, These are your options. And I, and I would say either way, man, I don't know your personal situation and book a session because I don't want to get all into it. But look, man, it's not a you're not in a you're not in a power position or position with leverage. You love this woman more than she loves you. That's really what comes through. And I'm sorry that that's what it is. And it's never a good position for a man to be in a situation where a woman loves him. He loves a woman more than she loves him. It's never a good position ever. If this space of YouTube has told you one thing that should be clear. And you don't make permanent decisions with people who are who really don't want to be with you. But you did. So now you're trying to reverse engineering a fitter. I get it. You got to protect yourself. Okay. I, I, I don't know what else to say, man. This is why I say high value men tend to avoid folk like that. Control what you can control. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. How old are you? I'm 23. Cool. Well, what's your question? Hey, so um, I just moved to a new city, living by my own, doing the exact thing opposite what you said. But um, my main question is, um, how do I go about finding that wolf pack and make sure I'm with those right-minded individuals? Um, uh, where you work? You, how many hours a week um, are you working? How many hours a week are you working? So main job, I work 40 hours a week. And then I have um, also going for my master's degree. So that's additional hours. And then I have my own side business also actually like 10, 15 hours. So in total, it could be around 60 to 70 hours in total of work. Where do you work out? So, um, what I work out, we have a gym in the apartment complex is where no, I go a few times a week. No, 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 no. That's where you meet your wolf pack at the gym. Take, uh -huh. take, take $75 a month and, and carry your ass to the best gym in the city. Where so like an actual gym? Yes. That's where the men will be. Okay. That's where the men who are success driven and motivated will be. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be. See, one thing that we as men got to get over is convenience. That's why I was going so hard on the guy in Detroit. We got to get over convenience. Of success course. ain't convenient. Sound like mm -hmm. you got things grinding. Get, jump your ass down to lifetime fitness, whatever, whatever, whatever. Whatever the part of town where the young professionals live and work and all the happening restaurants and high rise apartments, go there. Of course. Go there. Lift weights there and then find some group 
classes like cardio kickboxing, cycling, something where you'll be forced to be in with people and go the, to the gym four or five times a week. And then from that, and after you get established there, I would say pick up a hobby. Uh, after you get out of the masters or whatever, you got a lot of stuff on your plate. But <laughs> yeah, you, tend, you, tend, you tend to find people, you tend to find like-minded people doing stuff. Guys go to CrossFit um, and all that other kind of stuff. Lastly, also, I would find uh, two to three little happening spots around the city, and I become a regular. Mm-hmm. I become a regular okay. at the bar to where you can eat a mm-hmm. light, nice appetizer and as a cool. Uh, yeah, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Yeah, so you said privilege to put myself out there is what you're saying. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, and anybody got, you know, wolves, 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 wolves don't hang out in the den. They hunt. Of course, of course. They're out hunting. So go find, go find where you see the G wagons and the yeah. other cars. Go there and yeah. hang out with those guys. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good night. All right, All right guys. I got like seventy-eight people in this call queue. That's far too many. Uh, let me see what I got. In the, let me see what I got in the comment section. Okay. Uh, thanks for the advice. Appreciate it. So, uh, a show similar to this changed my life, Godfather. Thank. So, young men, guys, understand something. I got. I'm gonna bring some more folks in. I understand that my, when I grew up is different than when you grew up. I get it. That's why I wanted to do this broadcast because. I get so many guys asking, what would you do in these times? I would take my my matrix awareness, my matrix awareness with my Henry mind, and I would blend, I would make the best outcome. You got to decide what you want, whether you're rugged, refined, uh, or rakish. Wherever you're at in the masculine archetype, what does your life look like at 50? Do you want a family? If you want a family, that means a woman's going to be necessary. If you don't want a family, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jamie Foxx, that kind of stuff over here. Either way. And here's the thing. That has its advantages as well. But the only way I would consider family is if I were married to a woman in a traditional setting. I would not do this modern new wave partner stuff. I just wouldn't. And I'm going to tell you, man, that Either side, whether you're this guy over here or this guy over here, you're you're in charge of your environment. And you have to you have to do what you have to do to keep yourself first, your purpose second, and everything else is a distant third. You see, one of the fears is that the court system and this and that, such and so forth, all that's a possibility. But guys, I would look, let me also say, in defense of potential relationships. Marriage is also a a union of families. You pick a woman from a a set family, a set family or a family of movers and shakers or connected people, that's a whole different thing. Let me bring in, okay, I'll give 15 more minutes. I'm just not going to be able to bring everybody in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring everybody in at once and I'm going to just let I'm going to sort through and see who pops up boom I'm bringing everybody in at once I can't I can't take 78 calls I just can't um so who's this in the corner Matthew unmute yourself Matthew, unmute yourself. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Kevin? I'm well. How old are you? I'm 25. All right. So, what's your question? Uh, my question was: You talk about uh, like the hiring, the hiring men and everything. Uh, uh, I'm a military guy. So, okay. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, by the way. Thank you. Um, I'm on the officer side, so I have the potential. In the next two years, anybody can look up the pay scales for us. But what is uh, what would you say for someone like me? I'm gonna be moving every three years or so. I'm in training a lot. I work. What would I say regarding what? Like finding a wife, like a good woman. How do you? A lot of the men. 
that joined in the military. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 25. At what age did I say you, you should even start? 35. Yeah, yeah, 35. Yeah. I wouldn't be worried about it right now. Right. I got I would, you. I would not. Uh, uh, no babies. No babies, no babies. Nah, you're, too, you're too worried. You're too young to be worried about a wife. Too young to be worried about the state of women. Thirty-five. Thirty-five yes, is when you when you revisit this scenario, because are you going to do your twenty? Uh, yes, sir. I'm a third generation, so I'm okay. So you're going to do your twenty. Then you'll be pretty well financially set. Then after you do your twenty, you should be roughly around in your early forties. Yes, sir. I'll be forty-three. All right, then you sh you'll be perfect time around 40 to get three years left. Start looking for a wife around 40. You'll have your financial side set. Then you'll have the rest of your life. Then you need to pick a wife for that life. Okay. Not today's life, that life. And, and then she's likely going to be in her, if I was 35 to 40, I'd be looking for a woman 23 to 27. 23 to 26, honestly. Right. It makes a lot of sense, sir. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, till then, uh, remove the word. I want you to go to your your smartphone, and I want you to type in the word marriage, and I want you to block it. <laughs> <laughs> block that shit, man. <laughs> yeah. I, only, I ask here, that because there's so many. That's like the, I don't know if you've been like in the military before. Like, no, my, family, my, my family's military on both sides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why I know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's yeah, different. Um, it's different for yeah. you guys than it was back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, my, um, so, like I was saying, I'm I'm gonna I'll be a captain next year. Yeah, yeah. you look like a whole lick. Are... You look like a whole lick right now. To them, to <laughs> them chicks hanging around these bases, they are trying to drop. They are trying to get you to shoot up the clubs. Hell no, man, no babies. Yes, sir. This is why you need a wolf pack. So when you're out doing what you're doing in Ports of Call or whatever, your wolf pack, hey man, hey, no raw dog, none of this shit. You know, I'm telling you, man, I've already go back to go back to the middle of the broadcast when I talked about honestly, this is when I'm down for sugar babies and getting women on retain on retainer. Um, yes, sir. But fuck all that. No, you got too much to look forward to. After you're 20, man, you're gonna be fucking set. And I will tell you, you don't even realize how good life is gonna be after 40. After 40 and up is like being a woman, 23 to 25 and hot. It is fucking yes, incredible. Yes, sir. All right, take it easy. Uh, no, I'm in it. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can. How old are you? 27. All right, what's the question? Okay, um... I just recently got promoted at my job at You Break Out Fix. It's a, a tech store where we work on uh, technology and fix all this stuff like that. And mm -hmm. uh, I was just wondering, like, how would you scale yourself to uh, work in this field? Because it's a growing company and everything like that. And I Did you go to college? Uh, yes, sir. Did you graduate? Yes, sir. Uh, how would I scale myself to grow in that industry? Uh, yes, to one day potentially like uh, branch up and start my own business in that industry. Well, are you now? What What is your job description again? I'm basically assistant manager. Mm -hmm. So yeah, fix phones, tablets, laptops, gaming consoles, stuff like that. And my degree was in computer science, so I know how to code and everything like that as well. Okay, but if you owned if you owned your own business, what kind of business would it be? Uh, something along the lines in that tech field, whether it be, yes, mostly in the repair side, because I kind of like hands-on more so than coding itself. I can so you actually, in, you'd be dealing with the hardware? Yes, sir. Well, uh, you need to study that industry. Find some, find some international, uh, international multinationals are too big. I look at, I would look for large regional, uh, hardware companies like you're talking about and small mm -hmm. local concerns and study those. See, you, you look at who's already doing what you're doing, what you want to do, and then you copy that. Then you take what they did and you tweak it. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Great artists create, I mean, good artists create, great artists steal. 
Because there's no unique ideas. Like when I started my YouTube channel, I openly say Alpha M, Aaron Moreno, he made a YouTube channel about men's style. And he made a video of how I became an image consultant. And I went looking for what I did for a client one day. And he kind of outlined it. And you know what I went and did? I went and did exactly what he said. I followed it almost step by step. And I tweaked it for me. Got you. And what you recommend? Like I need you guys to understand. Copy what works. Fuck all this. I got to be an individual and I got to figure it out, be Einstein or whatever. Fuck that. Do what works. Tweak it. 11 herbs and spices, make it 10, make it 12. But use what works. Gotcha. And guess one final quick question. Oh, yeah, by the way, happy Thanksgiving, my fellow 1911 brother. All right, then. Appreciate it. What's up? Uh, But, uh, yeah. Uh, how would you recommend mentorship and how long would you recommend staying uh, under uh, M- mentorship? Yes, sir. How long would you like recommend? I, I don't, like that? I don't work in, mentorship is too inorganic, too hard to, hard to quantify. And mentorship would be like you finding me and there's mm-hmm. less than about 2% chance that that's going to happen. I much prefer coaching. I much prefer you get a second stream of income, make money, pay a coach to help specific areas of uh, specific areas of improvement for long-term benefit coaching is better Shaq didn't get a free throw mentor he got a free throw coach and he paid that joker still wouldn't be much better but he did improve all right thank you i appreciate it appreciate it <laughs> all right dear. uh oh, here's a cue uh okay uh j- Go ahead and meet yourself. Jay? Can you Hello? hear me? Again, how, how old you are you? How old are I'm you? I'm 26, turned to 27 in December. All right, what's the question? All right, uh, I'm stuck in between a rock and a hard place. I currently have three sons, six, four, and two. Mm. I know, I know. I did not exercise control, okay. but we here. So right. um, currently I don't have any hard skills, no professional skills. I'm looking to Either one, take me and my sons and my potential wife into the military and have a stable life or go to college to become a registered nurse to make the transition to a position assistant just to break into the like, I'll take the 20%, I'll take the 30, but I'm trying to get out of paycheck to paycheck. What would you recommend? Well, um, whew. I know. Um, I would also consider, I would consider before college, college is, that's, that's just such a long play, man. Uh, I would consider becoming a, a skilled tradesman um, instead of piling on college debt. Um, trucking. Trucking is one of the industries that pays the most money and has the lowest barriers to entry. And you can also start your own business. Whether you did over the road trucking or whether you did, you know, uh, daily driving uh, and the ability to make that kind of money, take the money you make, buy your own truck, possibly own your own small fleet, far better upside than being a, going to school and piling on all that debt to become a nurse. Uh, the military um, as, an, as an option as well, but it's still going to be kind of, you're going to be capped. You're going to be capped with three children. Um, not like you're gonna go into be an. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say that, but I just don't. I don't see it has a lot of upside as a family man with three small kids. Um, but I'll leave it open to the people in the in, in the comment section if you guys want to respond uh, what's possible in the military because I don't know that much about what's possible for somebody with kids. But I would say one thing: you need to go get a vasectomy. <laughs> A vasectomy because oh. you, there's too many damn kids to be this young. You cannot be doing I know. this. Man. I was no, out here wilding. No, you know? no, 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 no more kids, man. Because, and I hope you know you marry this woman because uh, you don't. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, don't want, I got two baby mamas. I ain't trying to go for a third, man. I, I, I want to make it right. I'm just saying, but you can't be out there making no more babies, man. And you can't be out here. Uh, Dealing with baby mama drama and three kids trying to man up. Hello, how are you? Hey, Kevin, can you hear, can you hear me? I can. How old are, What's your name? 
Um, my name is Wolf. Okay, and how old are you? I just turned 30. All right, what's the question? So I just want to ask you, like, how do you stay patient, right? Patient, what I mean is that after you've done all the work, you laid the, the foundation to become your next, the best version of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You, um, um, like for me, for instance, I got myself a- How do I become position. patient in what regard? In regard to like, after you've done all the work, I, I feel like waiting to find your partner or like your wife, right? Can you uh, say like the, the perfect age is- Remove expectations. Re remove remove expe expectations? Yeah, because you can't control that. Okay. All you can, all you can control is you working your purpose and putting yourself in proximity. If you do the things I talked about, you will, you will live an interesting life. If you are living in a in a in a, a city with NFL M, NFL NBA Major League Baseball working sixty hours a week, uh, working out uh, with hobbies, you have a social life. You're involved uh, in the city apparatus. You're you're an, known as an eligible bachelor. What's the downside to living a life like that? You got your wolf pack. <laughs> you got to get out there. See, the problem is a lot of guys don't want to go live the life. They just want to fast forward to the family. And that's cool. But you, but women are drawn to men who are busy. Mm -hmm. Women who are drawn to men who other women want. <laughs> and you say, be patient. Well, I, my concern is you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And then when Mrs. Wright or so shows up, our natural tendency is to turn away from doing everything we're doing to focus on her because we've been waiting for her for so long. That's where I'm at now. No. That's where I'm at now because I no. see, you know what it is? I thought I met Mrs. Wright, but then like it's been a few weeks. I'm just like, yo, something is not right. I'm just not few feeling. Weeks. No, 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 no. No, 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 we've been talking for like, uh, um, it's about to be four months, but okay. um, it's, you know, the, the, the sign of it is, is wearing off. And I'm just feeling, I'm just like, oh man, this, this ain't right. I'm just not feeling, you know what I mean? It's like, because mm -hmm. um, I, I, from the onset, I told okay. her exactly. Oh, all right. But see, if you're on your purpose, yeah, this should not be, this is, the, see, women are best in our lives and they don't preoccupy, don't, don't take a, or preoccupy us that much. Mm -hmm. I've been in a position and you have to fight it. But what you're saying the, the chat room is probably exploding with matrix thoughts because you sh you should be doing what you're supposed to be doing and she's mm -hmm. supposed to be worrying about you getting on your program and qualifying for your thing Four she months. does it's oh. it's okay. um but, but you don't but you don't you don't come across as a man who is in charge of this mm. okay and if you don't if you don't get that shit straightened out this is when we tend to run into the ditch because we're not leading effectively mm -hmm. and patience. This is why your wolf pack is so important. So your boys can be like, Hey man, you, you, you simping now. You want some baby yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the yeah, fuck's wrong with that. you? Yeah. <laughs> Punch you in your goddamn chest. I'm serious. I'm that, man. Guilty as charged. I'm no better. Guilty as charged. Cause and, you know what it is got, like, Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But but it's better for you and better for her this way because a woman doesn't want to be responsible for all the, the all the shit you're trying to heap on her. Pressure's made for shoulders, not hips. She's an add-on accessory. She's she, you're supposed to be living the life. She's supposed to come in and make the nest. And, and we try to put too much pressure on a woman, and that's all back to what I said: expectation. Mm -hmm. Only one person gonna love you unconditionally and make you feel like that, and that's your mama. Every other woman is a woman, as good or bad as they are, women. They're not. They're not the answer. They're not the yeah. answer, and it's too much pressure to put on them. Guilty as charged. So guilty as charged, and that's why I re remind myself. And this is why I think it's better when we, as content creators, tell you we're not perfect. We're we're just as, we got issues too. We're doing the best we can. And with what we yeah. got, we live in a world where being a man is not highly thought of or championed, and the world re easy relationships are over. Yeah. They're over. That, They're not coming sure. back anytime in our lifetime. 
But then there still has to be something we can do in this time frame. Don't put all that pressure on her and, and remove those expectations. All right, let me try to get to a couple more people and I'm gonna get up out of here. Um, I'm gonna just scroll through here real quick. There's a lot of people here. I'm gonna just let this go over. All right, here we go right here. Boom. This guy. Hello. What's going on, Kevin? How are you? Uh, uh, what's your first name? Uh, bless, like God bless you. Okay, how old are you? I'm 21. All right, what's the question? Uh, my, my main question is, uh, how, how do you be more action oriented? Like what steps should I take or what, what, what kind of mentality should I have to be more action oriented? Cause I think that that's where I'm failing in my life. When was, that, when was the last time you were in a fight? Uh, it was like two, like la last year, just about last year. A one-on-one -on -one fight. Um, I got robbed. Well, my my no 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 not 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 not, not robbed. When was the last time you had a one on one fight with a, somebody you weren't related to, or a friend? Some last time you got into a fight. Never been. Yeah, never been. Okay, that's the problem. That's why I recommend martial arts. We are not warriors anymore. We're grass eating lions. Yeah. A man learns who he, a man we we learn who we are when we get punched in our nose real hard. I and agree. action oriented. This is why I I say that I think men need to get out here and learn how to fight again. Um, if you've been watching the broadcast, yeah, and without I, being able to go into too many diff details, reigniting the warrior fighting spirit in you, uh, uh. It unearths and uncovers so many things in men that are sleeping or dormant because we should not be this lax. We should live a life of combat. That's what we're built for. So, um, and how you set, how, and how you, how you, uh, simulate that in a civilized world in the, in the gym, in the ring, when you act, that's why I say taking martial arts is fine, but you need to get into martial arts where you actually got to fight spar, where you got to throw some blows. This is why uh, if it's just forms and all that stuff, no, no, you got to actually, somebody got to, yeah, you need to get your ass whooped every now and then. That's really what needs to happen. It's really what needs yeah. to happen. And I'll tell you, as, as, as refined as I am, yeah, anyway, I've already said before, you carry yourself a different way as a man when you know how to handle yourself. You give a different kind of energy and the resets. Understand something, guys. It's not an easy time you guys are living in, but you need to live in it anyway. Living on purpose. Living on purpose is best for us as men uh, because the world is going to give you a bunch of different messages. This is wrong. This is right. This, these hoaches, these you can't change all that. Get your wolf pack, get yourself, live on purpose and, and, and control your environment, control your controllables. That's the best we can do. All right. I hope this was beneficial. Uh, I'm going to leave this up. Um, it's Thanksgiving. Uh, I got family coming in town. Uh, I don't know if I'll be doing something tomorrow or not. If I do, uh, if I don't, I'll post up a show cancellation tomorrow. Um, but this was this was good. This was good. All right. I uh, hope everybody had a great holiday. I know it was cool. My my meal wasn't that good though. I ain't gonna lie. Ugh. I'm like man. Uh, sometimes people just make I'm like this is some nasty stuffing Ugh. you ever have stuffing and it's just like you don't even, mm -mm. ever eat something that's not good and you're like I need to go get me a chicken sandwich or something I need to give you something that I like to eat but anyway what if if I was your age what I would do I would live life on purpose so should you until the next time gentlemen peace we are gone
Cause I'm addicted to what you and 